Blender interface, loading a model, and navigating. If you haven't installed Blender or Blender BIM, then please go to another video on this channel where I explain how to install Blender and Blender BIM and then come back. Once you have, well, let's go over this. So, Blender's interface is divided in two panels. This is the main viewport panel and it shows 3D geometry. The top right outliner shows a tree of geometric objects. The bottom right panel shows data and relationships. There are different workspaces that have different types of layouts. And obviously you wouldn't have this one because it's a default template that I've been using. If you'd like to follow along and use the same one, then please go to Sigma Dimensions slash learn. And when you click on Blender BIM for beginners, you can download the layout template and also the IFC file we're going to be using. Once you have these files, then go to File, Open. Choose Layout Template. Then go to File, Defaults, Save Startup File and click on Save Startup File again. This should open up the same exact layout that I have in this tutorial. There is even a scripting environment with a bunch of nice things here. We'll go through that later on and add more to it. So, let's look at the Properties panel a little bit more in detail. We'll go to the Scene Properties and then we'll find the IFC Project sub-panel. Once we have, we'll click on Load Project and click on this house.ifc that's also available on the website. After loading, you'll see the model appear in the viewport panel. Let's take a closer look at this IFC project sub-panel again. It shows the file name as well as the IFC schema. And there are two commonly known IFC schemas, 2x3 and IFC4. Checking the IFC schema is important because it has an impact on what BIM data may be stored. IFC 4 is the newer version and we recommend to use IFC 4 as it has significantly more BIM capabilities compared to IFC 2x3. And if you have 2x3 files, you can simply upgrade them. And again, there is a video on this channel that explains how to do so. To navigate, you can use the Navigate Gizmo on the top right corner. Click and drag on one of the colored axes to orbit. Click and drag on the magnifying zoom to zoom in and out. Click and drag on the hand to pan. And if you click on this little grid icon, you'll be able to switch between orthographic and perspective. To switch to a top view, front view or side view, you need to click the relevant axes. If you'd like to achieve the same thing with your numpad, you can press 7 for the top view, control 7 for the bottom view, 3 for a side view, a similar for one for the front view and control one for the opposite side. You get the point. These hotkeys are case sensitive, which means that my mouse needs to be exactly in my viewport for this to work. If I were to press seven with my mouse in the outliner, this wouldn't work. Okay, so let's do something else with the mouse in the viewport. Let's click on the middle mouse button. We'll be able to orbit. If we click now on shift and middle mouse button, we can pan. And if we just wheel in and wheel out with our mouse, we'll be able to zoom in and out. Okay, let's select an object. To zoom and focus on this object, we'll press 1. Notice how this will also become our point of rotation. If we'd like to do the same thing through the menu, we'll go to view, frame selected. To look at all the objects in this scene, We'll press frame all and here we can see we have a sun, we have a camera and we have our little house here. Another good way to navigate is by using the fly method. So let's fly, let's press shift and tilde. Tilde is the key on the left hand side of your keyboard next to the one. So here we're just using video game controls 
and if you press on shift you'll accelerate if you also wheel in and wheel out you'll change your rhythm okay this is too fast i'm getting dizzy let's stop here you could activate this through view navigation fly navigation and same as before with WASD we'll be able to fly around but this has weird sensitivity so I'll just stop it and that's a wrap for basic navigation we're now going to look at an overview of all the objects and other handy tools to select and isolate objects in our viewport